all up here. It's snowy. Whoa! The Tissue Box Theater presents Sven's Snowy Surprise. Meet Sven. Sven is a reindeer who loves carrots and his friends. his sleigh. Someone ate the last of his carrots. And to top it all off, Sven's best friend Kristoff was away at an ice convention in a place that was too warm for a reindeer, Hawaii. Elsa noticed that Sven wasn't his usual silly self, so she decided to help him feel better. Sven, I brought you a flower from a garden in Arendelle. If you'd like, you can have it for stack. <makes noise> said Sven, shaking his head, which meant, thanks, but I'd rather have a carrot. Elsa couldn't make Sven feel better, but maybe Anna would have better luck. We can go on an adventure together, Sven she said. Would you like to come to the enchanted forest with me? <makes noise> said Sven, which meant it's a good idea, but I can't find my sleigh, and I don't want to leave without it. Poor Sven. Would he ever feel better? Suddenly, he heard a great big roar <makes noise> nearby. It was Marshmallow the Snow Monster. <makes noise> said Sven, which meant, Great, a snow monster. Can this day get any worse? Marshmallow came closer and closer, his giant snow arms waving in the air. Any minute now he would grab Sven and, <makes noise> said Marshmallow, which meant, Hi, Sven. Would you like a hug? To Sven's great surprise, Marshmallow didn't come to stir up trouble. He came to help his friend feel better. And it worked. As soon as Sven felt better, he remembered where he parked his sleigh, which he rode to the market, where he bought a bag full of carrots, which he shared with his wonderful, generous, kind, helpful friends. The end. Hi, friends. I'm here today with a wonderful Ala, who you've seen is a puppeteer magnificent. And I just thought I'd ask her a few questions about how she made those amazing puppets and sort of how she came up with the story. So this is like a little Q&A with Ala. Um, hi, Ala, how you doing? Uh, hi, Jocelyn, I'm okay. I'm, I'm really excited to, um, to, to share some stories with my friends. Awesome, well, we love the stories you've shared already. And I'm just curious a little bit, can we just start at the beginning? Like what makes you excited to tell stories with puppets specifically? Well, um, I really like art. That is to say, I like making stuff out of paper. I like using tape and <laughs> glue and paper in all sorts of creative ways. And this gives me a chance to not only tell a story, something I really love doing, but also use art to do it. Nice. I feel you on all those points. So when you're coming up with a story, how, how, do, how does that work? Do you like sit down at a piece of paper or you act stuff out or what happens? What's your process? Well, Usually, the way that I think of a story starts with a character, and that is someone like an animal or a person that um, is having a very special kind of day. 
because every story has got to have something really special about it, don't you think? Totally. And does special always mean good or does it mean other things to you? Sometimes it means like a really extraordinary good day, but sometimes it means a day where everything goes wrong. Mm. And wait, why can't we just tell a story about like a regular day? Why is that maybe not so? Well, everyone usually has regular days and hearing a story about a regular day might be a little bit boring, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's true. Yeah. So, so the special day, and then, and then, so how do you like involve other characters in there? Because you always have such amazing other characters that come, come into our story. Well, I know it's going to sound a little silly, but I let the character who I start with tell me about what they're feeling, mm. and then I think of who would be best to help the problem get fixed? So, do you want to hear a for example? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. For example, in my Frozen story, I started out with Sven, the reindeer, who was feeling really, really sad, right? Mm. And his problems were that he forgot where he parked his sleigh, <laughs> and that he had no more carrots left. Oh, I hate when I forget where I park my sleigh. Right? And when I have no carrots. Exactly. So I thought about who would be a good character to help Sven. And of course, the first person that came to mind is Kristoff, his best friend. But to make the story even more interesting, Jocelyn, I made Kristoff go on a trip. Oh, cool so that he couldn't help Sven. So now Sven had someone else to help him. And one of them was Elsa. I love her. And yeah. the other person was Anna. Cool. And there was a great big surprise at the end, which always, always makes a story better. Do you know what the big surprise was? What? There was a snow monster in the story. <laughs> But he was actually a really, really sweet, loving monster. Oh, so interesting. So there was like a switcheroo, like, a, like something you didn't expect. Exactly, because usually people think monsters are there to cause trouble. Yeah. But this monster was there just to give Sven a hug. <laughs> Amazing. And, yeah, and that was kind of funny and unexpected and surprising. And those are all good ways to tell a story and make a story interesting. Amazing. So we get characters meeting other characters and some kind of special day, maybe good, maybe bad. Something that happens along the way with those characters that's especially unexpected. I love it. Thank you so much for that lesson in how to tell a story, Ala. Sure thing. Yeah. Do you want to know how I made my tissue box theater? about to ask you, how did you make your tissue box theater? So this, as you can see, is a box. Yeah. And it's a pretty small box, but it still works really well as a shadow you box theater. You used to have tissues in that box? I did, it looked, it looked like this. Oh, one of those boxes, I know those boxes. Cool. And I took all the tissues out. Okay. And I put them somewhere else that's safe. Safe, okay. And clean, yes. Yeah. And what I did was I, I use scissors, and for this part, you would need a, an adult, um, an adult's help. I know some adults, yeah. Yes, they could help um, cut out some, some of this stuff, because you cool. do need to cut the back. Yeah. Okay. And the sides of uh -huh. this box to make okay. the theater work. And then, this is a very important part. Are you ready, Jocelyn? I'm so ready, yeah. I used wax paper. Ooh, that's super cool. Yes, to make sure that the puppets turn into shadows in the box. Awesome. How yeah. do you like light it? I use a light in the back of the box. So Whoa. sometimes I use a flashlight and sometimes yeah. you can use a lamp 
And sometimes you can even use, if your grown up lets you have it, uh, an iPhone, and, and you turn it on and you leave it behind the box. Uh -huh. Huh? You have to make sure that the room you're in is a little dark. Okay. And then voila, you uh, got amazing. shadow theater. And how did you, like, what's the thing where you, are you using a popsicle stick or a dowel or how did, how did the well, puppet? Well, if I yeah. were to use, um, do you want to see another puppet? I it's do. It's a snake. It's a oh, snake. Yeah. If I were to hold the snake with my fingers, yeah. they might get in the way. They're in the way. Yeah. Yeah. And they might yeah. make a shadow of their own and oh, we don't no. want to do that. No. So I put the snake on a really long stick. Cool. Yeah. Um, you can also put it on like a pencil or a marker. Good idea. Yeah. And you tape it around. Can I see the back of it? What's you the... can use tape, but I use some glue. Ah, uh, glue. Yeah. Cool. And okay. then that way you can easily move the shadow puppet in yep. and out of the box. Ah, very cool. Alo, this has been so awesome to chat with you about shadow puppets. I cannot wait. I'm going to go make one tonight, maybe when I get the I can't little... wait to see yours, and I can't, I can't wait to hear all of the stories that our friends come up with. Yes, I can't wait either. Amazing. Well, have fun, you guys, crafting and making up stories, and we'll check back with you later. Bye. Bye.